So real quick before we jump into the video, I do have a look. I do have a look on this video. Sure. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Monica. Today I'm doing a video all about products and tools that are really worth investing in. When you first start out with makeup or you're really just getting into it, you're trying to build your collection, it can be pretty tough to tell the difference between what you should be getting at the drugstore and what is fine at that price versus what you could, you know, splurge for and actually have be worth it at Sephora, at Ulta, and online with a couple of indie brands that is very well at the same tier as some of the higher brands that we see in Sephora and Ulta. So I have six products slash tools here that once I invested in them, I really saw a difference not just in my makeup application, but in my technique and how they and how the products wore throughout the day. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those six products and tell you what I think you should really be investing in or buying more high end. If you would like to see a drugstore version, because I do have quite a long list of products here that I think are fine at the drugstore that you can find plenty of different products for i would be happy to do a drugstore version just let me know down below if you'd be interested in seeing that because that one would be a much longer video it's definitely more than six product types so real quick before we jump into the video proper i do have a video on the look that i'm wearing today it was my first impression with one of the new bh cosmetics palettes if i have it already up i'll go ahead and throw it up in the cards and i'll link it down link it and I'll link it down below. And if it's not out yet, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon just so that you can be notified as soon as it does come out. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the products I think you should be investing in. The number one product, it's really a tool that once I invested in, I saw like immediate changes in my technique. Brushes. Brushes are the one thing where I believe investment is 100% worth it because if you take care of your brushes, if you wash them, if you clean them, if you keep up with the maintenance, they will last you years. For the rest of the products, eventually, I mean, you spend a decent amount of money on them, but eventually you are going to use them up. You are going to go through them. With brushes, I find that if if you do spend a lot of money on them, they are better quality for the most part. With one exception, we will get into that. But as long as you keep up with the maintenance, they will work better for you. They will help you achieve better looks and they will last a good long time. So I have a couple of different brushes from different brush sets here. I'm just gonna go through a couple of them real quick and tell you about how I invested in them. Okay, so the first ever like higher end brush set I got was from Sigma and it was actually a set of these little blue um, like barreled eye brushes. It was like the brush, it was like this, the bunny kit. It was from a couple years ago around Easter and it was about $60 for a couple of their eye brushes. I believe it came with like their E25, which is, I have the black version of it right here. I do have two of them. Um, but it came in a set with these two, a pencil brush and a few other essential eye brushes. And from that moment on, I just saw my eyeshadow game get kicked up a notch. And these brushes, like they still look brand new. Anyway, I'll, I'll do close-ups on all the brushes just so that you can see how they look. But I've had these brushes for years and they still look and perform brand new. After I got that little mini set with those eye brushes from Sigma, I did save up for about a year. And after I got my tax return, I actually went and bought one of the full Sigma brush sets. And I did get one of the big, um, like, brush books to hold all the brushes in. But I got the, like, the ultimate copper set. So all the brushes had the copper, all the brushes had the copper ferrule. And it did come with quite a few brushes. So I got a full set of eye brushes. I got, like, a few of the Kabuki brushes as well. And then I got, I'll throw a picture up of the the full collection that I did get but that was it was it was definitely more expensive but those are the brushes that I use every day like I have the eye brushes from that collection I use every day with that collection and with the the bunny one and with one I bought on its own I did end up with three of the Sigma E25 which is the blending brush that is one of the best investments ever. Like there's a reason why everyone talks about this brush everywhere and it really helps, especially if you have incredibly hooded lids. If you have hooded lids, I would recommend this brush. It'll change your life. Not only this one, there's a couple of different like versions of this same brush. There's one from MAC and there's one from Morphe. But the MAC one, I have it right over here. I believe it's the 217. Yeah, so we have the Sigma E25 is basically the same as the MAC 217 which is also pretty much the same as the Morphe M433 brush. The one exception I was talking about, about high-end brushes, is MAC. I only have one brush from MAC 
let me say I only have two brushes from MAC that I actually like and neither of them are blending brushes because the 217 that I have it's the scratchiest brush ever created like it almost hurts to use this on my eye and it was like that before I washed it and even after I washed it a few times hoping it would like get a little bit smoother no it's still one of the worst brushes ever and I'm actually like upset that <laughs> I bought this but it cost a lot of money so I still use it when these two are incredibly dirty the two brushes from MAC that I actually do like one is a concealer brush that I use to actually pat either um, glitter glue or concealer all over my eye to set it for primer and then I also have a spoolie from MAC I only picked this up because I was at MAC and I had a gift card and I really needed the spoolie because I just threw out my one from e.l.f. the one from e.l.f. is fine the one from MAC is eh. So we went through the first two Sigma kits that I got and in between I did pick up a couple of brushes from MAC I wasn't really happy with. I wouldn't splurge on MAC brushes at all. It's not really worth it. I would go Sigma or Morphe. Now I did splurge this past Christmas and I got the Morphe Jaclyn Hill Favorites brush set. And it did come in this big like brush set case and it opens up and you have all the brushes in here. I keep all of my big face brushes in here and it's a mix of all of my different types of face brushes but my favorites from that kit are I couldn't find it because it was in my dirty brush section so my favorite from that set are these right here I don't recommend the entire set because I really don't think you need every single brush that she has especially when it comes to the eye brushes you basically get four of the same blending brush and those white bristled blending brushes from Morphe they're not the best you see how it's already like fraying a bit um, that's only after I washed it like twice Whereas with my Sigma one, I've had this for two years and it still looks brand new, practically. So there you go. But my favorites from the set are the Morphe R10, which is what I use for contour. The Morphe R2, which is a nice big powder brush. It's the perfect size. And then the Morphe M439. And this is a foundation brush. Before this brush, I never used brushes for foundation. It was always sponges. But now that I have this brush and I've used it, it's kind of opened like all these doors for me because now foundation actually goes on well with a brush. And I've tried several different brushes. I had the, the Sigma F80, which is what everyone raves about. It wasn't the best for me. And I just thought that it was just, you know, the way my skin reacts, how my skin likes to hold onto product. Maybe it's just better with a sponge, but foundations do work amazingly with this brush. Okay, so that is everything for the brushes that I love that I invested in. I know that there are now plenty of options for drugstore brushes, but, but once I invested in like good brushes, good quality brushes and kept up with the maintenance, I saw a huge improvement in my makeup. The next product that I really think is worth investing in are eyeshadow palettes. Now I have two examples right here. In this day and age, there are plenty of drugstore alternatives for eyeshadow palettes. You have Wet n Wild that comes out with amazing products. You have BH Cosmetics. Some of my favorite palettes are from BH Cosmetics, but overall, when it comes to developing your makeup skills, to developing your techniques, I think that higher end eyeshadow palettes really give you room to play with formula, really give you experience. I kind of don't want to call it experience, but it's a whole different world going from like Wet n Wild and BH to Lorac to Anastasia. And it's something you really have to just experience for yourself and learn how to use it. This was the first, one of the first high-end palettes I ever got. It's the very first Lorac Pro. I do have all three of the Pro palettes. And I've had this for about two years now. And I do have a decent amount of wear in it, but I haven't hit pan in any one shade. The first time I used this palette, after coming from mainly drugstore palettes and maybe one testing one high-end palette that wasn't that pigmented coming to something this pigmented and blendable I like butchered the first handful of looks that I tried because I had no idea how to use a formula like this and once you actually get to play around with different formulas and learn how things blend and really learn your eye shape your game your your skills will increase exponentially and I really think that that's something you can only find right now in higher end palettes not to say that you need a higher end palette but it is a good experience it is good to try out different formulas and you're not really going to find an exact dupe for a Lorac shadow at the drugstore you're not going to find an exact dupe for the formula of Anastasia at the drugstore you'll find plenty of color dupes Wet n Wild has an amazing palette that looks just like this. Everyone and their mother is coming out with palettes that look just like this, but you're not going to find this exact formula 
anywhere else. And also, you know, full disclosure, I'm an eyeshadow palette junkie. I actually went and counted my eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna do an eyeshadow palette like collection at some point because I have a lot. I have a lot. We'll just, we'll just leave it there. Okay, so this next product comes with a little bit of an asterisk and that is foundation. There are so many amazing foundations at the drugstore, but, and here's the but, but there are two factors that really make me, like, that really push me to higher end foundations, and the first is my shade. I am lighter, it's not like I have an impossible shade to find, but I do have very strange undertones, and my shade fluctuates wildly from the summer to the fall to the winter. That's just because I walk to work every day. I'm in the sun in the summer a lot. Throughout the year I tan, I burn, my neck and my chest are almost never the same shade as my face. It's just a lot to work around. So shade is a big issue and also the ability to last throughout the day without breaking down. This is a huge one for people that work full days, that work active days, because you need a foundation that is going to sit on the skin, look beautiful, not budge, not be transferring everywhere, and look amazing throughout a 10 hour work shift and still look amazing. Cause you're not gonna have time to go to the bathroom, touch up your foundation. If you're lucky, you might get a break, but you're not gonna have enough time to just redo everything. So keeping those two in mind, some of my favorite foundations are higher end. Now, the one foundation that I've found is like my holy grail. I'm wearing it today with a lightener because the shade I have is a little too dark. It is the Too Faced Peach Perfect Matte Comfort Comfort Matte Foundation. I have the shade Warm Nude. Now, in the summer, this was my perfect shade. Now, not so much. I got a lightener from LA Girl. It's like of their foundation in just the white shade, and I've been using that to lighten this, and it actually works perfectly. I do have a nice match right now. This actually is transfer resistant. Like, look, I'm pretty sure I, I could take a nap right now and nothing would come off my face, but let me see. Nothing. And I've had this on for quite a couple of hours already. I would definitely agree with all the claims on the bottle. It says it is oil-free, 14-hour wear, oil controlling, and photo friendly. This just happened to be like my perfect holy grail foundation because I happened to find my perfect shade at the time and a formula that just worked so well for me throughout the day. Now, mind you, I tried this in the middle of the summer when I first got it. So this lasted throughout a full day of me walking to work in 90 degree weather, running around all day at work, and then walking home in 90 degree weather. Yes. <laughs> Another high-end foundation that I think is worth it, this one's a little bit different, it's the Fenty Feud- Fenty Feudy. It is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. I have the shade 160. Now, right now, in the middle of the winter by itself, this looks horrid on me. During the summer, when I was more oily, this looked amazing. But since I can't use it by itself, I've been mixing it in with a bunch of foundations. And I've found that this is my favorite foundation to mix with other foundations. My favorite foundation to mix in this one with was actually the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation and I went through a whole bottle of that one mixing in the Fenty and mixed about like two-thirds of the Estee Lauder to one-third of the Fenty and that was my like perfect fall foundation. Recently I've been mixing this in with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation and I have the shade Y245. So these two together do make a good shade match for me right now and it does last throughout the day and hold up through everything that I put it through. Again, foundation is a very personal kind of preference when it comes to makeup. It really depends on what you're looking for in a foundation which is why I put like that big asterisk on the foundation part of this. It's definitely not something you need to invest in given how great some of the options are from the drugstore, but given what I'm looking for, I found the best performing ones are higher end. The next product I had, I actually had concealer on here and then I scratched it out in my notes and I replaced it with color corrector because I have been proven wrong. I have found a concealer that works amazing, better than my high-end concealer. I have a whole drawer of like higher-end concealers and I keep reaching for this one. It is the Ulta Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. I have the shade Light Warm. This is high coverage. It covers everything you needed to cover. It does not crease and it lasts throughout the day. You literally cannot ask for more from a concealer. 
so that product did remove concealers from my list for me um but it didn't but i still have color corrector on there because my favorite color Okay, and we are back online. My battery just died. I had to recalibrate, but thankfully we were at a good stopping point. So the next product that I have on here is glitter. Now I know you're going to be like, but Monica, there's so many great glitters at like NYX and from all these other drugstore brands, but do they make it easy? No. You can get loose glitter from anywhere. What I'm talking about is goof proof, beginner friendly glitter. That is something worth investing in, especially if you don't have a whole lot of time to be messing around with different little bottles of pigments and all that stuff, really. The best products I've found are right here. So I have the Stila Glitter and Glows. I have quite a few of them. And also the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Liners. The Glitter and Glows are an amazing way to add a pop of color, add glitter, not make a mess, have it last throughout the day. You will get a little bit of fallout with this. Always do your eyes first. And then throughout the day, you might get a little bit of glitter down here. So maybe don't wear it to work. But these are stunning. And and they really are the easiest things to apply. Every one of them has like this little flat applicator. Swoop. And look at that. So I first got a three pack. It was around the holiday times. It came with the shades Kitten Karma, Diamond Dust, and Smoky Storm. These all three were $25 and I think that was a steal. I don't know if that um, like bundle is still available. I'll have to look it up and get back to you guys. But after trying those and loving them, I went ahead and picked up... Oh, don't drop it. So after trying those and loving them, I went ahead and picked up quite a few more. I also got one of their shimmer and glows and not the glitter and glows. So I have the shades Gold Goddess, Perlina, Molten Midnight, Inifarens, Rose Gold Retro, and then the shimmer one is called La Douce. I love these. You don't need this many, honestly. If you had just the pack of three, you would be set for quite a long time. I just love to collect makeup and I love glitter. The heavy metals are a great way to add a little bit of oomph to a look, especially if you're trying to get into cut creases. I got this because I really liked how a cut crease looked with a little bit of glitter right along the cut crease. But it comes with a little liner applicator and you just swoop it right across you get quite a little line right there. It's definitely something that you build up a little bit as you go, but I find that that is definitely better for beginners because you can build up the you can build up the glitter instead of just globbing way too much on and then being like, "Oh, what do I do with all this extra glitter?" The next and last product I have on this list are sprays for prolonging makeup wear. And I put that emphasis right there for a reason because if you're looking for something similar to a MAC Fix Plus to either foil shadows or just to set down all of your powder, you can find that at the drugstore. Milani has an amazing spray that is amazing for that. What I'm looking for is something to set all the makeup in and help prolong the actual wear of the powder, of, the, of everything on your face. Now these are all sprays where I've tried them out and I've noticed an actual noticeable difference between the sides of my face that I've had it and the side that has not. The first one is the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. This was the first higher end spray that I got. I have a little mini spray right now. It's got a nice mister on it. It's very refreshing. It has a little bit of a strange scent but you get used to it and honestly this does lock in your foundation. Like I said I walk to work every day. This makes my makeup not budge. Now moving from the Urban Decay All Nighter, I went ahead and got straight from Scandinavia the Makeup Setting Spray. Now those of you that don't know, I believe most of the setting sprays by Urban Decay are actually made by Scandinavia and then they just get packaged in Urban Decay packaging. If you buy it straight from Scandinavia, it's like $10 less and Scandinavia always has sales. Like they always do like um, buy one or buy two, get two of the little mini sprayers for free and they always do free shipping. So I always wait till I get an email about a Scandinavia sale and then I will stock up. This is their giant like eight ounce bottle. I got this on sale. It was around $20, $22. I got two of the mini sprays for free with it and I got free shipping. 
This is practically the same thing as the Urban Decay All Nighter. It's just a little bit cheaper and it comes in a bigger bottle. So I actually will empty this out. I have a little Fix Plus bottle that I just reuse and refill up because this thing is actually like too big for me to try to spray my face with. Now the last one that I have that I really enjoy, especially now that it's the winter, is the Cover Effects Illuminating Face Spray. This one has one of the best nozzles. It's, let's spray a little bit. You barely feel it on your face, but it really does illuminate your skin and it prolongs the wear of your makeup. It's all you could ask for. This one I didn't actually buy. I got this in a boxy charm. I'm not sure if I would repurchase just because it is so pricey and because I do like the Scandinavia one the best so far. But I do see a noticeable difference when I use this one. Alright, so that is everything that I believe is worth investing in if you're looking to build your collection or really work on your techniques, your makeup style. Nope. Or if you're really looking to work on your makeup technique, work on your makeup style, work on your makeup game more. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so I know you like to see more in the future. Don't forget to comment down below and let me know if you want to see the drugstore version of this. Let me go ahead and show you. These were the notes. This is the high-end stuff. This is the drugstore stuff. As you can see, most of what I think is worth getting is from the drugstore. So if you would like to see that video, it will be a little bit longer, but I'd be happy to put it together. Just go ahead and let me know down below. And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you won't catch, so you won't catch any of my videos. So you won't miss any of my future videos, and I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye!